Dragon Tamers. Away across the oceans, where few have dared to roam, a pond or wondrous island, a family made its home. Brothers Flynn and Patty were the wildest of boys, with animals for playmates and sticks and shells for toys. Although they loved their island home, it cannot be ignored. Their lack of other children means the boys are sometimes bored. The only cure for boredom, as all the smart children know, is, of course, to go somewhere you're not allowed to go. The attic, though forbidden, was where the boys were bound to poke among the treasures without the slightest sound. Quick, said Flynn, come over here and take a look at this. I found a map of a land nearby, but something is amiss. But it seems that every landmark has another secret name, like Tree of Wailing Witches and Ridge of Rising Flam. There's Swamp of Children's Wishes and the hill called Mother's Knee. I'd love to take a closer look at Dragon Hatchery. That night, they stuffed their backpacks with the fruit and lemonade and sandwiches that Patty made, sliced ham with marmalade just as dawn was breaking. They wrote to their mom a note. They tipped up to the forest path right past their sleeping goat. They stopped to make this wish beside the swamp of children's wishes, a carefree year of dining while never doing dishes. They paused to have a picnic on the ridge of rising flame. There isn't any smoke, said Flynn. It's really quite a shame. A sudden flame rose skyward and scorched his sandwich bread. Now you have a toasty, his little brother said. Look, said Flynn, I think I spy the hill called Mother's Knee, which meant that we will soon approach the dragon hatchery. It must be out of season, said Patty with a sigh. I cannot see a single egg or dragon in the sky. He sat upon a rock to rest and watched Flynn search around. A tiny breeze escaped his bum and made a little sound. Beneath him came a sudden jolt and then a cracking sound. The rock, in fact, a dragon's head lay open on the ground. Run! yelled Flynn, who understood the trouble they were in. But all around them, dragons hatched, creating quite a din. The boys ran down the mother's knee as fast as they could go, the hope that they were, they would be quick and all the dragons slow. In fact, a baby dragon is the equal of a lad, so simple mathematics meant that things were looking bad. We'll have to be creative, said Patty to his brother. You're right, said Flynn, or else we'll be in trouble with our mother. They ran into the forest and hid behind a rock. Then they stayed until they tricked the baby dragon flock. Having dodged a chasing horde, Flynn was feeling bolder until he felt a scaly claw fall gently on his shoulder. That dragon wouldn't leave alone poor Patty and his brother. It's possible it thought they were his father and its mother. All right, said Flynn. It's okay. Come on with us back home, but don't get eaten, Coco, and leave the goat alone. The sky was turning orange before they reached their house. Stop here, they said, and keep it down. Be quiet as a mouth. You're late, exclaimed their mother. Your dinner's getting cold. Go wash those filthy hands. Now do as you've been told. Tibbets uh, filled their pockets of the two young kindly brothers who fed them to their dragon friend that night beneath the covers. Their dreams of baby dragons and boys are much the same. A life of wild adventure and future fun and games.